Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, uh, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video if you find it useful and um, it helps you with your uh, your fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Um, so uh, this week I had a very interesting question uh, from... Um, Someone on YouTube who said, if the Fed is hawkish about raising rates, interest rates, then why does the dollar depreciate? For example, Chairman Powell warned on the March the 7th that the Fed could switch back to higher rates. The pound strengthened against the dollar in the four weeks, in the next four weeks. I noticed in those four weeks that the jobs report was fairly strong too. Why didn't the dollar strengthen? Thank you. The content is Great. And so um, I'm going to answer that after the uh, analysis that I do. And it's a very good question. Um, so, yeah, let's get into uh, this uh, this next week, as well as um, uh, some of the details. So in the week ahead, um, 24th of April, we have and we're going to skip the US earnings. And it says all, um, also in the spotlight will be um, will be taken by advanced Estimate for Q1 GDP growth rate, personal income and spending, PCE price index, uh, durable goods orders and new home sales. Elsewhere, GDP figures will be released for France, the euro area, Germany, Italy, Spain and uh, those are the ones that we look at. Finally, investors will closely follow inflation rates for France, Spain, Germany, and Australia and uh, monetary policy decision for Japan, which is uh, UEDA. The new governor is expected to uh, to continue with um, the ultra loose monetary policy. So that's what we've got going on this week. And so heading to the technicals and actually starting off on the dollar index. And the dollar index is really just a measure of uh, dollar strength against the major currencies like the pound, the euro and the yen. And um, if you've been watching for any length of time, you've known that I've been bearish on the dollar for a while since probably the beginning of the year, uh, end of last year. And so um, pretty much if you're, you know, if you've got a fundamental bias, it makes things easier for you uh, in terms of your direction, right? And where the path of least resistance is. And for me, uh, I've been saying that the path of least resistance is to the downside and you can see what's been what's been happening. So um, a pullback really technically um, should, you know, in any of these areas should be um, looked at as uh, some confluence um, when it comes to, uh, shorting the dollar. So one of the things you've got is uh, supply zones. But what I also do, or one of the things I also do when it comes to technical analysis is understand where uh, support and resistance is in alignment with um, uh, supply and demand zones. And so there's a nice interesting area around there and uh, probably one right at these highs as well on the daily time frame chart where you can see support and resistance within that uh, supply zone. So I think any pullbacks into these zones um in these areas the 102 probably round number just above that and even just the highs of that supply zone i think you start to see um uh, bearish price action <clears throat> uh then you what you want to do is as if you are uh, of course um bearish on the dollar you don't have to be but just from my fundamental perspective i think these areas here are uh, decent technical areas um if you want to go uh, short on any of the other dollar crosses right now fundamentally we've got um the fed officials on track to high crates uh, um and signal a potential pause right some policymakers call for prudence uh, amid banking stress uh, what officials do beyond me um, hinges on the economy. So the Federal Reserve are on track to raise interest rates a quarter percentage point next month and signal a potential pause from the steepest hiking campaign in decades. Policy makers across uh, the hawkish and dovish ends of the spectrum stress that inflation is still too high and the um, US central bank has more work to do. But there is also concern that the fallout from recent bank failures will slow the economy as well right so uh, many caution on a tightening of lending standards sparked 
by last month's banking stress could lead to a pullback in spending and weigh on growth and prices, lessening the need for further rate increases, right? Because, because the more that you hike, um, uh, it affects the economy, uh, borrowing and lending. And so um, uh, uh, central banks typically don't want to hike in a recession. And so, um, or if we're going into a recession, I say we, but they, or any economy. So uh, what officials do beyond May the second and the third meeting will hinge on what happens with the economy, which so far has weathered higher borrowing costs. The Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, may leave the door open to either holding borrowing costs steady or hiking again at their subsequent gathering in mid-June as they assess the banking landscape. And so, um, you know, they say inflation is, 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 still a bit too high uh, but the expectation actually from a lot of banks is that they are um, uh, to pause rates and um, one of the things that we're seeing as well is that the Fed's inflation expectation index falls to the lowest since 2021 so the index has fallen st three straight quarters from a record high index compromises or more than 20 inflation expectation indicators and so if inflation is naturally coming down then the Fed are less likely to want to hike because the Fed don't really want to tinker with interest rates if they don't have to if they see inflation naturally coming down towards their two percent target then um um, that really is um, um, an indication that they may start to, uh, uh, or they're likely to actually pause uh, interest rates because they don't have to do anything. They don't have to, um, they can just let inflation come down naturally. And so with that being said, my bias is still actually to the short side until obviously data proves. Um, otherwise, you know, data can change. Uh, but for now, as we see things, my bias is to the short side. And so any pullback, uh, deeper pullbacks will be better shorting opportunities on the uh, dollar index, in my opinion, of course, this is not financial advice. Uh, the dollar yen and the dollar yen, um, I was saying this a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't around last week, but um, a couple of weeks ago, I was saying that potentially we could have prices come up, you know, to the upside. And we actually did to this 135 area. Now, it's interesting that we've come up to this area um, uh, for, for kind of two reasons. Well, one main reason is more that the, um, the new governor for the uh, Bank of Japan, uh, Ueda is was has been very um, sorry dovish um, in terms of his um, in tone, right? Um, let me just go to yeah, Japan, right? He's been very quite dovish in his tone, and since he kind of uh, taken over, and so uh, with a dovish tone and um, the market expecting that yield curve control, which is a measure really to kind of um, devalue the currency is to be removed. And if it gets removed, it means that uh, the market will have to reprice the uh, Japanese yen actually higher, meaning that, you know, appreciate it. It will appreciate. But it's the timing of when that yield curve control is to be adjusted. And one of the factors in it being adjusted sooner rather than later is inflation. So inflation, at, um, Japan inflation outpaces forecast again as Bank of Japan prepares to meet. So just before the meeting, we've had, you know, the uh, inflation um, uh, release and the gauge of underlying price trend at strongest since 1981. Governor uh, Kazuo Ueda holds first policy meeting next week now it's not actually expected that he will change rates at the meeting um it's actually expected in june but also the bank of japan have also said that they actually may, will surprise the market um interestingly enough and the historically if you've been in um forex and trading forex for any length of time uh, you'll know that the bank of japan is known for surprises so they don't want to announce when they are going to, or it may be a surprise and likely will be a surprise when it comes to announcing the end of yield curve control or any kind of adjustment. So um, the main thing to look for really is, and what the market is going to be looking for in the speech, is any change to his language, how dovish or hawkish is he um, when the speech comes out. So um, there is the, this is, this could be a turning point in the yen but I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if you actually see price go um, higher 
if he is dovish because there is um, a lot of positioning actually to the uh, to the downside because it like I said it's, it's expected that Yoko control will actually end at some point uh, this year and so if anyone who is short here in the expectation pretty much is probably going to get uh, stopped out uh, which the market is looking for liquidity and it wouldn't surprise me if prices did come up to these 138s and even just above that and stop hunting the level so um in the short term, I think that may happen. Not too sure, of course, who knows. But if that does happen, doesn't mean I'm going to be, have a long bias on the uh, dollar or uh, remove my short bias um, for the dollar yen. I think it's just a better shorting opportunity to get involved because once they do remove the, the yield curve control, the expectation is, in fact, that uh, prices by the end of the year should actually fall to around um, the 120 uh, area. So there's a lot of pips in this trade. So it doesn't matter if you lose a couple of times, um, if you understand that the, um, the the trade idea behind it and why prices are likely to potentially come down to the 120s, um, you know, all you need is a decent uh, win to cover any losses. And so uh, that's where I am in terms of um, my bias on, on the dollar yen. Uh, dollar Swiss, not really a pair I'm interested in trading. Uh, we can see from last week that, in fact, that uh, supply zone, uh, didn't uh, didn't hold the Swiss franc has been um, unbelievably strong recently. Um, not really too sure why because they um, they're not. It's not like they're uh, extra hawkish or you know their inflation is uh, you know as high as somewhere like the UK you know over here. So, um, but maybe risk off sentiment as well is um, is helping the uh, the Swiss franc. They are looking to high rates one more time. And so as we made lower lows, lower highs, um, basically a pullback into this supply zone um, is going to be the best opportunity to look to buy the Swiss franc against the US dollar. From a uh, buying the dollar perspective, though, I would probably refrain from trying to buy the dollar um, if I was going to buy the dollar. Um, I probably want, want to see this uh, price action make higher highs, higher lows before um, looking to buy the dollar, if I was going to be a buyer of the dollar, that is. Um, so, yeah, I want to see prices kind of make a higher high there, proof of demand, and then a pullback into that area before looking at um, going long. But for now, um, yeah, I'm not really looking to take uh, or trade this. If I was, then it would be actually to the, uh, the downside and buy the Swiss franc over the US dollar. Um, in a risk off environment, but again, I'm not really uh, looking to take that. Um, dollar CAD, interesting one, right? So <clears throat> these were the two scenarios I was talking about uh, in the previous video, saying that price could either bounce off of here, right? That zone there, obviously that zone didn't um, play out. And again, this isn't really a pair that I'm looking to trade, but I can understand why traders were. And um, you had the CAD strengthening against the US dollar, but then you had some dollar strength come back in. In fact, it's probably more uh, Canada uh, weakness because I think there was some inflation data for the Canadian dollar that actually came out um, lower. So the Canadian dollar, the Bank of Japan, um, Bank, of Japan Bank of Canada, were, um, were there was a bit of a thing where they were, protect, they were on hold, but they were potentially looking to high grace depending on what happened with inflation. And so inflation came out lower than expected. Um, and so you've seen, um, you know, basically uh, the dollar being bought because the dollar actually is, is still, they are still hiking one more time, right? That's the expectation that Bank of Canada is still um, pausing rates. And the fact that inflation came out lower than expected reinforced that Bank of Canada hold. And so um, you've seen, you know, prices bounce off of uh, this 133 area. Now we are actually in a supply zone right now. So if you did want to get involved in, uh, shorting the uh, dollar, the US dollar, and buying a Canadian dollar for whatever reason, then this is the this is a decent opportunity to do that. Nice level, but um, again, not really a pair that I would look to buy the um, Canadian dollar um, or the um, or the uh, US dollar at the moment. Not on that pair. So, uh, but technically got some nice levels. I think this level now has probably been touched several times. So, if there was if you were looking to buy this, I would probably look for just a fresher area of demand 
right at the 13250s, the low end of this uh, demand zone before looking at getting long if it does come back down there. Um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the New Zealand dollar has been struggling since um, they actually hiked rates. Uh, the expectation was that, in fact, the um, the New Zealand economy actually might go into a recession towards the end of the year. And so we've had uh, pretty much a bit of a pullback on this, um, on the uh, New Zealand dollar. Although I do think that price is, made, is likely to, um, to auction right uh and when i say auction i'm talking about range within this uh this level here so we've got the one 0.61 cent area so i do think that prices could probably be held up in and around this zone here so if you were looking to buy the new zealand dollar against the us dollar then um i think this is going to be a decent uh buy but um for me uh not really again not really a pay i'm looking to 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 get involved in there is if you want to kind of take supply all the way down here. I know it's not nice and people don't like having and seeing wide zones or anything like that. But when you get a wide zone like this on a daily time frame chart, uh, one of the things you can do is just break the zone down into uh, support and resistance areas, either on the daily or on an intraday time frame chart. So going down to maybe like the one hour, the two hour, and just seeing where obvious levels of support and resistance are within that supply zone, and then look for trades if you're looking for short trades in that area, or if you're looking for long trades, you know, looking, looking for that area there. It's going to be one of the most accurate areas within that area of demand. Now, looking back. And going to the pound dollar and the pound dollar. So uh, I'm personally looking for any long trades on here, looking for a deeper pullback, just haven't got one. Um, one of the reasons why the pound has been actually quite strong is because uh, recently you had the Bank of England, uh, the expectation for them to raise interest rates again has increased because inflation only dipped to 10.1%, um, rather than I think it was expected to come down to 9.8%. So UK inflation failed to drop into single digit levels last month uh, as food prices kept soaring, meaning central bank expected to raise borrowing costs again. And so, um, yeah. Uh, that's kept the pound supported with the expectation of the Bank of England to continue to uh, raise interest rates to try and get inflation down. So there are potentially two more hikes coming. I think there was, um, in fact, let me go back to the article. I think there was, yeah, here. So I'll read this anyway. It says the City of London is anticipating that the UK interest rates could hit 5% before the end of the year after prices across the economy rose faster than expected. UK inflation remained in double digits uh, with annual prices of 10.1% last month, dashing hopes of a 9.8% fall. The data makes it almost certain that the Bank of England will increase interest rates next month from 4.25 to 4.5, to 4 with two more quarter point increases also being priced in by the money markets before the year is over so um that is what is you know potentially happening so ed conway says golly the uh, less than a month ago investors were betting the bank of england where rates would peak at 4.5 or even 4.25 now they're betting that they'll hit five percent this year highest projected rate uh since mini budget fallout another consequence of unexpectedly high and stubborn inflation and so um again you know, the fundamentals of what really drives markets. And, you know, if you haven't got your finger on the pulse, then um, then you're going to miss this stuff, right? And so going back to, you know, the pound dollar, this is basically what's being expected. That has to be priced in. So I think any pullbacks into um, these demand zones, especially down into this one, two, three level, um, or even just that one, two, three, 50 area i think is is going to be decent for a um for a uh, a buy trade uh, but the better the pullback or the deeper the pullback i think the better um in the short term so let's see what happens with uh with that and uh, was there anything else for the um yeah for the pound i think yeah with the pound again what's next next for the uk recession or boom and 
um, you know, the uh, still no signs that um, of a UK recession and, the, you know, the economy is still doing better than expected. And that really is um, supporting interest rate hikes and supporting the pound overall. Right. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. That's pretty much where we are with the pound. If you do want to get short on the uh, pound and try and short the, uh, like I said, short the pound and buy the US dollar for whatever reason, I think there is going to be your earliest area to look for a short trade. I'll zoom out a little bit. Yeah, you did, did, I think the nearest zone, you've got something up top as well, which is a zone from May 2022. So that level will probably be looked at um, but let's see what happens for me. My bias is to the long side. Euro dollar and euro dollar. The euro is actually expecting again, like the pound, two to three more hikes expected. And they are, they will, at the time I, I did this analysis a couple of weeks ago, they were the most hawkish central bank. Um, they're probably on par now with the uh, Bank of England being quite, or maybe being quite hawkish in terms of the market pricing in um two more uh, rate hikes, but um, we've got ECB's Matt Kalouf, I think that's how you pronounce it, warns it's too early to plan pause in rates. So rates will have to stay at a restrictive level to cut inflation. ECB is widely expected to hike again at next meeting in May. So it's too early for the central bank to start planning for a pause in its rapid rate tightening cycle, given the significant challenges to price stability Europe's economy is facing, according to Central Bank of Ireland Governor Gabriel McAloof. So um, whereas you've got the US are, um, uh, you know, considering pauses, um, the ECB are saying it's way too early for pauses. And so, um, you know, there's a, there's the divergence right there. So we've got... Uh, for me, any pullbacks into uh, zones, I think, are going to be nice opportunities to buy. Um, yeah, if it can get down back into these 108s, 108, 108, 108.50 areas, I think that is going to be a very, very, very nice buy. And a cheap price for the euro, as long as the data supports the narrative, right? So it doesn't mean that um, it's going to be an absolute buy. And it gets down here, there's got to be reasons for why it is down here. And if prices come down, the fundamentals are still the same and they support euro buying and dollar selling, then this is going to be seen as a bargain price. And so, um, yeah, any pullbacks, I think, are decent for a buy. My bias is still to buy uh, euros over the dollars at the moment. Uh, moving on to the Australian dollar, uh, US dollar, and the Australian dollar um, has been a bit of a tricky one uh, with China reopening and actually the um, data coming out better than expected. Um, you would have thought that it would have supported the Australian dollar, but uh, unfortunately um, not. But I do think that the 65 cent seems like a bit of a, um, a flaw, and maybe even down into 65 round numbers right here 65.50 has been a bit of a fall but I think if prices come down to the 65 area that should be actually a very good bargain price because as China starts to reopen um, more risk on if it does of course the data has to support that but if it does and prices are coming down I think the Australian dollar is going to be a really nice buy um, but uh, again Australia has been experiencing some issues their central bank um I said one more hike expected and it was data dependent. I do think that recent data has come out where um, it's increased the chance of a uh, one more hike because they did hold the last time um, and it was considered a hawkish hold. But um, again, I think the data uh, has to support a rate hike before before prices do actually go to the upside. If they, if, um, if they don't, then you're probably likely to see, uh, in fact, you know, prices... Um, you know, come uh, lower. And especially if, let's say, for example, the US data comes out and supports more rate hikes, then you actually might see prices come down to uh, the 65 area, even the 64.50. So um, the Australian dollar, although I do think it's a, a, a buy, uh, just maybe not against the, uh, the US dollar at the moment. And finally, gold. And so with gold, um, with the dollar potentially weakening, um, if you think the dollar is going to weaken, then any pullbacks on gold are nice buying opportunities, especially, you know, down into the 1960s areas, 1940s, I think is going to be a really nice uh, technical buy for gold. Again, um, providing that 
Um, the US dollar is going to continue to weaken over the medium to long term. Really nothing to kind of say about that. Yeah, we've, we've approached the highs and we've, you know, there's been some profit taking here. Um, so really, it's really about the pullbacks into even, you know, the uh, 19s. If that can happen, then that'd be an even, you know, better buy for gold. But uh depends on what will happen with uh with um the US dollar and also the recession fears as well should be supporting gold um into the end of this year. And it depends on whether you know the US do go into a recession, but there is talk about it. So let's see what happens there. So uh that brings us to the end of the technical analysis. Um and I want to again just ask the or answer the question, which was um just to remind you guys if the Fed is hawkish yeah, about raising interest rates, then why does the dollar depreciate? For example, Chairman Powell warned on March the 7th that the Fed could switch back to higher rates. The pound strengthened against the dollar in the uh, the next four weeks, right? So I noticed that in those four weeks that the jobs report was fairly strong too. Why didn't the dollar strengthen? Thank you. And the content is great. And so let me uh, start off um, by indeed confirming that, uh, no, don't switch. Um, indeed, the and this is our um, the Trading 180 uh, private members mentoring group. And um, the, the, some of the uh, analysis that we get are from, uh, you know, prominent banks in the industry. And um, just to confirm that indeed what was being said at the time was true, that the main trigger for the US dollar, and this was... Um, let me just go back out again. So this was taken on the 28th of uh, February. Yeah, so heading into that March 7th meeting, the um, the Federal Reserve said was, was actually quite hawkish, right? So the main trigger for the US dollar rebound this month has been the hawkish repricing of Fed rate hike expectations in response to stronger US activity and inflation data and the start of the year. So the latest stronger PCE deflator report, which is inflation report, on Friday has prompted the US rate market to fully price in 75 basis points of further hikes and a higher probability, 62% of that the Fed could even revert back to delivering larger 50 basis point hikes at the next FOMC meeting on the 22nd of March. So yes, there was some hawkishness surrounding the uh, the dollar right around that time. But guess what happened? SVB Bank happened. So on Friday, on March the 10th, Friday, 10th of March 2023, Silicon Valley Bank failed after a bank run marking the second largest bank failure in the United States history and the largest since the 2007-2008 financial crisis. It was one of the three um, March 2023 United States bank failures, right? So there's two other banks. And so that put obviously a spanner in the works for the Federal Reserve because um, you know, bank failures end up, um, you know, hurting the economy. And so um, this was a report from HSBC uh, around, um, actually this was 27th of March, but there was, um, it was talking about basically credit conditions, right? So one of the things that was um, uh, an issue uh, for, you know, the bank collapses was the fact that um, uh, tighter credit, right? Credit crunch potentially, uh, coming because uh, you know actually in fact to explain what a credit crunch is for anyone that doesn't know so you know what happens during a credit crunch and how can you prepare for one is that a credit crunch is a significant tightening of lending standards among banks so loans are harder to get and become more costly the banking crisis triggered by the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank will likely lead small and mid-sized institutions to prioritize having healthy balance sheet the prospect of recession led banks um, to call lending even prior to recent woes and so um again if if banks are um in in problems and they've got problems on their balance sheets then they are going to uh, charge more for lending and restrict lending um um, practices and then that actually hurts the economy because businesses find it hard to get loans and when they do get loans then uh, they got to pay higher uh, borrowing costs right and so um that is pretty much what was affecting the dollar and you know there was always there was talk basically about will the re u.s recession face a, a, sorry will the u.s economy face a deep recession that was the question being asked um since silicon valley bank and so uh the problem was and uh 
you know, that was pretty much what was happening. And so um, what was also being priced in as well is the fact that the Federal Reserve were looking to cut rates before um, other central banks. If you look at the US, UK, Eurozone, and you got China at the bottom, uh, one of the forecasts from ING Bank was that, um, you know, if there was going to be a recession sooner in the US, then the Federal Reserve will have to cut rates sooner. And um, so you can see that by January 2024, it looks like by the end of this year into going into next year, it looks like the, um, the Fed are going to be cutting rates sooner or that's, you know, based off of what is happening, uh, you know, today. So the market is uh, quite forward looking and future looking. So when, you know, um, uh, uh, this has to be priced in, um, the dollar will be the uh, currency that is going to be most affected because the market isn't necessarily focused on what is happening today. Of course, they've got one eye on what's happening today, but they're very uh, future forward uh, thinking and looking. And so with that, you know, um, by the end of the year, rate cut, that has to be priced in. And so you've seen that happen, recession fears going on in the U.S., um, also, as well, at the same time, the inflation rate has been coming down, right? So we've seen inflation come down recently from six to five, quite a big drop at the recent readings um, from March to April. So we've got March the 14th and then April the 12th. And so um, with that, that again, as I alluded to earlier in the video, um, with inflation coming down, it puts less pressure on the central bank to high crates. And so that has also um, had an effect on the uh, the dollar. So with the pound, you know, um, still having high inflation um, and uh, sticky inflation, the pound dollar has been a story really about the, not only the dollar getting um, uh, or devaluing and getting weaker, right, based off of, um, you know, recession fears, banking uh, credit credit uh, crunch fears, and um, inflation coming down anyway. And with the pound, we've had actually better than expected, um, you know, economic data, as well as sticky inflation and a repricing of the um, interest rate hikes or potential interest rate hikes. And so, you know, that brings us really back to um, the why, right? That's basically what's been happening over the past four weeks. And uh, that's the reason why the dollar didn't uh, strengthen. And so, yeah, everything pretty much, I would say 99% of the time can be explained with fundamentals, not necessarily everything because um, there are, you know, liquidity um you know, issues and things going on behind the scenes. But pretty much, I would say between 90, 95% of the time, price in the over the medium to long term can it be explained with fundamentals if you look back at what was going on. Um, and even at the time um, in the group, we've been actually been uh, short on that dollar for a while. And, you know, if you go back through my weekly videos, you've seen that my bias has been uh, sh uh, short dollars as well. So um, this isn't necessarily hindsight bias, it's something that I've been saying. So um, thank you for the question. Great question. And, uh, you know, the best question of the week uh, will get answered and hopefully, um, you know, that answers everything and uh, covers all bases. Anyways, guys, take care until the next video. Uh, hope you will have a great trading week and uh, all the best.